Like you just saw, we are starting a new series tonight, starting a new series called Overheard. Everybody say Overheard. Yes, there we go. Thank you, Jordan. I love the participation. But over the next four weeks, like Justin said, as we get ready for Easter, we're going to be looking at Jesus, the character of Jesus in the Bible and a couple different conversations that he has. Uh, and so just leading up to Easter. So every Wednesday night, we will be back here. It won't be as crazy as this. Uh on non-wake nights, we do a thing called Youth Midweek where we come. It's a lot more chilled, a lot more laid back. Message is not as long as this. Worship is not as long as that. And uh, we break out into small groups. And that is where true life change and community is found. So if you don't have a youth home, definitely come join us on Wednesdays or Sunday mornings. But here's something that I've learned really early on. There is nothing crazier than your life being changed after a simple conversation. Nothing crazier. There's really nothing crazier. Uh, and we get into like a bunch of different conversations or a lot of different debates uh, about space sometimes or like aliens, like do they really exist? And some guy has a weird theory on where aliens are and they're coming soon. Uh, con conspiracy theories. I know some people believe in them. Who thinks that we actually landed on the moon? Does anybody think we actually landed on the moon? Uh, yeah, not a lot of y'all, but anyways, it's a huge debate, and it usually turns into arguments, because there are some people that are like, yo, they have the film set, they have the studio set in Area 51, like, it's there, I promise. Uh, so yeah, there, conversations always happen that uh, can change your life. But here's what's crazy, here's what's crazy. Uh, check it out. There's this conversation, there's this conversation that I had, it was really more like a lesson that I learned 20 years ago, over 20 years ago, that changed my life. And I can tell you it changed my life because I still remember it today. Uh, and here's the beautiful thing about that. I remember being in elementary school. I was in an elementary school at Winship Elementary, Spring ISD, probably like the fourth or fifth grade at the time. Um, and this lady came into class. She came into class and began talking about water about beautiful H2O, what we need to survive. She began talking about water and how we can conserve water. I'm sure maybe you've got the lesson where they're talking about conserving water and what we can do, uh, but how much we waste as humans on a daily basis, the unnecessary use in certain circumstances. Uh, and eventually she was showing us like these different tools and uh, that we can use to conserve and learning how to simply conserve water in our everyday life. And here's what I learned, that I took away from that day and applied to my life every single day. Ever since that day, ever since that lady walked into my fourth or fifth grade classroom, I always turn the water off when I'm brushing my teeth. I always turn the water off when I'm brushing my teeth. Does anybody do that? Does anybody turn the water off? Amen, because you are conserving a lot of water. That lady showed me, I can't tell you the exact amount. I cannot tell you the exact amount of how much water I was wasting. But I remember back then, it blew my mind, and it led me to change something that I do every single day for the rest of my life. So I'm here to tell you to turn off the water when you brush your teeth. But I'm also here to tell you something more important than that. And what we see in tonight's scripture passage is an encounter with Jesus that changed somebody's life. Kind of like how my life was changed, but way better than simply brushing your teeth. Uh, but he had to want this encounter. His name is Zacchaeus, and he had to want this encounter despite what other people thought. And here's the big thing I want for us to grasp in the next 20 minutes is J Zacchaeus chose to follow Jesus. Zacchaeus chose to follow Jesus and completely changed his lifestyle once he had a conversation with Jesus. It completely changed his lifestyle once he had a conversation with Jesus. And my hope and prayer is that we can be a youth, we can be a people that want to have that encounter, that want our life to be changed by simply seeking out Jesus. So let's take a look at tonight's scripture passage. We're going to be in Luke chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, and it'll be up on the screen for you guys. But it says this, it says, Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus. He was a chief tax collector and was a wealthy man. 
He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. All my short kings, anybody in here, short kings, we're making it through. Uh, <laughs> but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So this is what he did in verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, mutter he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. They were very upset and very confused. And then it continues in verse 8. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man too is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. I'll repeat that one more time. Verse 10, for the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. Let's pray. God, I just thank you for tonight, God, and I ask that you would just help us lock in, help us focus, God, remove the distractions so that you can speak clearly to us tonight, God. And, and right now, if we haven't yet set ourselves in this position, God, I ask that you would put us in a posture to want to encounter you tonight, God. Just give us a wanting to experience your presence, God. Nothing crazy, but let us just want to seek you. Let us want to be saved by you. And let us leave differently than how we came in tonight, God. And so we love you, and we thank you for all that you've done and all you're going to do. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. Amen. Now, I want to press pause real briefly on this passage of scripture, and we're going to come back to it towards the end. But I want to talk about some simple application points that you'll see are correlated with this scripture verse. And, uh, you know, some of my favorite moments in life are when people around me didn't care about their surroundings. Some of my favorite moments, my favorite memories are when people didn't care about their surroundings. And everybody in the room tonight, you have that friend or that family member That'll constantly embarrass the family out in public. Or maybe you are the family member that will do anything for a laugh, and you're always embarrassing everyone around you. Not intentionally, not because you want to embarrass them, but that's just who they are at their core. They just don't care about anybody's opinion. They're going to do what they want to do at any given time. And so I'm reminded of a couple moments in my life. And uh, there's a video that will play. It's just one video. Uh, you can go ahead and play it. But it's with my cousin and my nephew. And uh, it was hilarious. It's hilarious. Uh, first, there was this time. This is my cousin, Aiden. You guys may have met him before, the Muscle Twins. They came to camp a long time ago. This is my cousin, Aiden. And he is at a football game when he's a kid, and, and he's just dancing crazily. And the song that's playing right now is like, all I do is win, 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 no matter what. And like, no disrespect, but you can see that this young white male does not have the rhythm that uh, some other people have been blessed with. Um, yeah, and so he's going crazy, and he's dancing, and it doesn't fit the song. And then there's this other clip that's going to play right after, and it's actually my nephew. A lot of you guys also know him. Uh, his name is uh, Gavin. And Gavin, this is whenever we went to Whataburger after one of our youth nights. And this was like three or four nights ago. And bro is just dancing across the entire Whataburger. And what you don't see is like he laps around all these people. And he doesn't care. And it was one of the funniest things of my life. And he didn't care about the people around him. He was just focused on us. And he was just being himself. He might have been trying to make us laugh. But at the end of the day, both of those scenarios, the young white guy with no rhythm dancing and Gavin slipping around the Whataburger floor, they were just being themselves. Good times, good memories. And you probably are thinking right now of a couple core memories, a couple amazing times that you remember where you couldn't stop laughing. Hilarious moments just like these. And I tell you that. I tell you that this evening because there is... There is a simplistic beauty in not caring about your surroundings. 
There is true beauty in not caring about anything going around, going on around you, not caring what anyone thinks, putting away your insecurities, and just being you. And so for the, the first point tonight, if you're taking notes, is simply ignore the crowd. Ignore the crowd. And we'll come back and correlate all of this together. But we can see in another passage of Scripture, in Colossians chapter 2, verse 8, it says this. It says, see to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which de demands on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world rather than on Christ. I love how I put this in the message. It's not on the screen, but a lot easier to understand, so hear me out. It says this, watch out for people who try to dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to anything. They spread their ideas through the empty traditions of human beings and the empty superstitions of spirit beings. But that's not the way of Christ. Everything of God gets expressed in him so you can see and hear him clearly. As a follower of Christ, we are called, as it says right here in Colossians, to essentially ignore the crowd. Ignore the crowd. Stop caring what other people think of you. Don't worry about what everyone else is doing, but do everything in a manner of the way of Christ. WWJD, what would Jesus do? He would ignore the crowd. And it's funny because this is, this is talking about in the context and the grand scheme of the world. This is talking about the context in the world, the empty traditions of human beings, as it states in the scripture. It's not even talking about the context of being here in church. Like it's not talking about being around other Christ followers, ignoring other Christ followers. Because if we're being honest, like a lot of you, you, you come in here and this is a safe space with Christ followers, with a bunch of fellow Christians. Majority of us at least have heard the gospel. We've maybe been in a church before. Um, but we struggle with like locking in during prayer. Like, we, we get distracted and we're talking. We struggle with maybe lifting our hands during worship because we know that's what we're supposed to do. We know that's what we're called to do, but we're worrying about what everybody around us is going to think. But as a believer, we must ignore the crowd, just you and Jesus, because that's all that matters. So what does that look like? What does it look like to ignore the crowd in our everyday life? Because this doesn't always have to be some crazy thing that we're doing just because we think that's what we're supposed to do. God is asking you to walk around every day. God isn't asking you, sorry. He's not asking you to walk around and like hold your Bible around the school and you're like singing hymns or you're singing Amazing Grace. That's not what ignore the crowd means. Uh, it simply means to put away the things of the world and pursue Jesus first. Pursue Jesus first, and then pursue whatever follows. But Jesus has to be first. There's a couple different realistic scenarios that I could think of. Some are more bold than others, but in every way, every way it should lead to ignore what culture may tell you to do. So a complex scenario, right, is like when someone mentions Jesus in a conversation that you're having. Maybe it's at the lunch table. Maybe it's at the grocery store while you're out playing basketball. Or, or you notice that someone is shaming the truth of Jesus, they're belittling the name of Jesus Christ. In that moment, it's really easy to shy away. But that's not what we're called to do. Ignore what the crowd might think in that situation. Ignore what they might think and remember the way of Christ in that scenario. Don't be rude. Don't be ignorant, but simply present the truth. Hey, you're out of line there. This is what scripture says. Here's like another average scenario, not as complex as maybe that one, not as uh, unique as that one. Don't go to a party when you know it's not the place you're supposed to be. Don't put yourself in a spot where it may cause you to sin. It may cause you to get yourself in a situation where you may start smoking, may start drinking, may start lusting. In that situation, ignore what the crowd tells you to do 
and remember the ways of Christ in those moments. An even simpler one. This one is really easy to apply in your life. I know how easy it can be to cuss in the middle of a simple conversation that you're having. Ignore the crowd and remember the ways of Christ in that conversation. Really simple things that you can do to ignore the crowd, follow Jesus, and pursue him first. When you learn to ignore the crowd, as you learn to do what is ultimately best for you, it also causes you to see the world in a different perspective. You begin to put anything that benefits you aside. You begin to put your own accolades aside. You begin to put anything that may bring you pleasure first aside because you ignore what the crowd thinks of you. And here's what I mean by that. You begin to live generously. Live generously. That's point number two. It says this in Proverbs 11, verse 25. A generous person will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. This is a rather easy point to grasp. It's an easy one to apply to your own life. But it becomes much easier when you ignore the selfish ideology that culture or the crowd presents to us daily. When you ignore the crowd, living generously becomes natural. Especially when we begin to see the fruits of that generosity. A generous person will prosper, just like it says in Proverbs. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. Same thing that we see in Scripture. Ignore the crowd, live generously. And the best way I could explain this to you is simply in my own life, in my own everyday walk with God. It's not perfect. I'm not a perfect person. But there's really simple things that we could apply. I literally told Alex this. Uh, Alex is my wife. I told her uh, on Sunday I told her Sunday night uh, how much I love Sunday nights and Wednesday nights after our church services. A little weird. I love the church service, but I love those moments after the church service. They're some of my favorite moments, and I'm not sure truly what it is. I couldn't pin it down. I don't know what it is. It's truly unexplainable, and I do know that. When it says whoever refreshes others will be refreshed, I know exactly what that means. Because after youth service, after tonight, when I should be dead tired, when I should be exhausted, I'm not. If anything, like I'm more awake than ever. You can ask Alex when I get home, I'm like, all right, what are we doing? Like the night is just starting. I love hanging out with friends and the energy burst that I get after service, wherever we go out to eat, I love that. And during youth camp at the time, I got an average of three and a half hours of sleep per night. I got an average of three and a half hours, and it is quite literally one of my favorite weeks from last year. I don't even remember those moments of being exhausted. I just remember how much fun it is to get to do what I love despite the circumstances of exhaustion in my life. And even financially, in my own life, even financially, I know most of you guys don't have to pay for your bills or you're not worrying about providing for a wife or a husband or your family yet, but I can tell you this and hold on to it and remember it because one day you will be able to apply it. Ever since I started tithing monthly, when I put my account monthly to give the same amount every single month, I have not worried one time about where my next meal will come or how I'm going to pay rent And there was some low moments, y'all. There were some low moments where I was planning out my ramen meals and my pizza roll meals, and I was trying to figure life out to make sure I got through the week. But God has abundantly taken care of me, and I'm extremely thankful. When you can learn, when you can understand to live generously, you will prosper, point blank. Does that sentence make sense? Absolutely not. It really doesn't. How does benefiting myself, how does not benefiting myself benefit me? How does not putting myself first, how does not putting my priorities first benefit me? It's unexplainable. 
But the truth is that that is the way of Christ. That is the way of Christ. And it doesn't always make sense and it doesn't have to. But when you ignore the crowd and you begin to live generously, you will begin to see the fruits of that labor. You will begin to prosper. You will begin to see that this is the way of Christ. And this is the best life that I could choose. Live generously. And both of these make way more sense ignoring the crowd and living generously, they make way more sense when you know what your mission is on earth. When you understand what it means to be a great follower of Christ, the essence of the Great Commission, ignoring the crowd and living generously are merely byproducts of that understanding. Point number three is know the purpose. Know the purpose, know your purpose. Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20, the Great Commission. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end end of the age. That right there is the purpose. That's the purpose that you have to know, that you have to grasp, that you have to get, you have to understand. I can't stress that enough. To go and make disciples of all nations, knowing that all all authority on earth belongs to Jesus and obeying what he has commanded us to do. Therefore, go. Ignore the crowd, live generously, and know your purpose. Know the purpose. And here's the cool part about this entire sermon, about this entire message, these three applicable points. Here's the cool part about it. I went over it at the very beginning in Luke 19. We're looking at Zacchaeus. And Zacchaeus got these three points. That's the life-changing thing that I hope and that you take away from this, that you should leave, is that with the power of Scripture, we can see what really took place in Zacchaeus' life. By simply studying Scripture, we can see what Zacchaeus did. What were his moves? What was his position? What ended up happening? And so, like I said, we're going to go back over it, and I wanted to break it down for you. We're going to go over the initial scripture passage. If you don't mind throwing that breakdown on the screen. The first thing we notice in verse 4 is that Zacchaeus, he ignored the crowd. He ignored the crowd. It says, so he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore fig tree to see him, to see Jesus, since Jesus was coming that way. No matter how dumb it looked to get in a tree, to get in a sycamore fig tree, he wanted to encounter Jesus more than anything in that moment. Despite how it may have looked for him to get in a tree, a little weird, right? You don't just see people getting in trees so they can see over and see what's happening. But he ignored the crowd. Zacchaeus didn't care what anybody thought about him in this moment. And he made sure that his first and only priority in that moment was to encounter Jesus first. He ignored the crowd. And then he learned very quickly through simply one encounter with Jesus to live a life full of generosity, one that pays its dues back to those who need it more. We see in verse 8, I know it's kind of hard to see, but I'll read it. It says, But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor, and if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Does that make sense to live generously like that? Absolutely not. There's no benefit to Zacchaeus in this moment. 
But by encountering God, he knows that's what he's supposed to do is live a generous life. And I can guarantee you that Zacchaeus was prosperous after this moment. He was, and it doesn't make sense always. He's given four times the amount. God, you want me to go and talk to that person? You want me to give this much? You want me to volunteer here? It doesn't always make sense for you. But if you can live a life of generosity, watch what God will do through you. And then Jesus, the main part. Jesus showed up and he showed him the entire purpose of this right there we see in verse 10. Know the purpose, and this is the purpose. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. He came to find you in the midst of your brokenness, and ultimately save you and begin to show you this new life. And when you see that purpose, when you see what Jesus has to offer for you, you will begin to ignore the crowd, put him first because you don't care what anyone thinks. You only want to encounter Jesus and you will begin to live a life of generosity that doesn't make sense. Why? Because you know the purpose. Ignore the crowd, live generously, know the purpose, just like Zacchaeus in this passage of scripture. A conversation with Jesus, a simple prayer, the wanting to encounter Jesus can change someone's life immediately and permanently, forever, just like Zacchaeus. And if you grasp and know your purpose, with hindsight, because Zacchaeus didn't know this at the time, what Jesus would ultimately do, but if you understand and know that Jesus came down and died on the cross for your sins, he came to seek and to save you, us, the lost and broken people. When you know that purpose, When you know that your purpose is ultimately to bring him glory in everything you do, whether it makes sense or not, like I said, the other two things, ignoring the crowd, ignoring the culture, and living generously will simply and naturally occur. You will begin to ignore everything the crowd does and the crowd tells you to do. Everything culture says is right, everything culture says is necessary to thrive, you will ignore all that because you only want to encounter Jesus. You only want to seek Jesus. And in essence, you will live a life full of generosity, not for your own benefit, but but for the benefit of the gospel. Ignore the crowd live generously, know the purpose, ignore the crowd, live generously, and know the purpose. Like I said, when you see that great commission from Jesus, when you see that purpose, and you understand the truth behind what he says, that he is the way, the truth, and the life, when you know that purpose, It should cause you to ignore the crowd. It should cause you to want to encounter him more than anything. You want to encounter and see Jesus enough to climb into a stupid tree. (laughs) Because you don't care what anybody thinks. You want to encounter Jesus and you begin to live generously. Why? Because you know the purpose. So remember those three things. Remember Zacchaeus. Begin to study scripture and let it speak to you like these points were brought to me. Let it speak to you because it may speak to you in a different light, in a different way, and you may see something that I didn't catch in this passage of scripture. But I know three things that we can take away and begin to apply to our life right when we leave. is to simply ignore the crowd, live generously, and know the purpose. Know your purpose.